So this is like a very simple design of a vector. Uh, my intention is to show you how to design your own iterator. So what do I have? I have uh, uh, I'm using a namespace. So this is maybe a new syntax for you. So what is namespace? Think of packages in Java, right? So when you design your own class, you may put your class into a separate package. So namespace is like package. So I call my package GVSU, and I design my vector like usual, but I now place everything inside a namespace. So my class declaration starting at line 37 all the way to line uh, whatever here, okay? <laughs> so everything is inside a template. So this is the, uh, I mean namespace, uh, inside a namespace. So this is like the end of the bracket of my <coughs> namespace. My namespace is GVSU, okay, there. Now when I declare my array, I mean my vector, when I declare my vector, then I need to say GVSU double colon, okay? It's not STD, normally you will say STD, double colon vector, but because this is a vector in my namespace, GPSU namespace, and I declare it using the double colon, okay? Now, what we have here is just an, a, a constructor, we have the destructor, we have the copy constructor, and we have the move constructor, and a pushback. What is a pushback? Pushback is a method that will add an item uh, to the end of your array, and if you look at the logic, uh, the pushback is very simple, uh, and first I need to check whether the array hits the capacity. I first allocate like certain amount, and if the array hits the capacity before I can push back, I need to expand. <coughs> I need to expand the array, so once I expand the array, then I'm gonna place that item at the end of my array, and then I'm going to increase the index, the size, by one. So that's a simple thing to do, and uh, I have the uh, uh, operator, brackets, <coughs> both the cons and non-cons, and this is an example of how I use the uh, <coughs> uh, the GPSU vector, okay? So it, it looks very similar to this STD vector, but more, uh, much, 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 much simpler. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create an iterator class, because I want to be able to use begin and end. If I try to use begin and end for my array, it's not going to work. <coughs> so if I try to do auto, auto uh, PTR uh, equals, uh, my array name is B, dot begin, I don't have a begin function yet. PTR not equals B dot end, and then if I say plus plus PTR, it's not going to work, okay? So my goal is to make it work, to make it work. So <coughs> first thing I need to provide the begin function, okay? So what is a begin function? A begin function is a function that must return an iterator. So if I put my begin, I need to declare my begin up here. So begin, okay? Now let me use the simplest case. I'm going to return a const iterator so, uh, and what would be the type? What would be the type of my iterator? Would the vector in the type? The vector in the type? That's not the answer I'm looking for. Memory location. Memory location, exactly. Okay, I need to give the memory location because iterator is like a pointer. Okay, so begin, begin practically inside. I need to return the address of my array. What is the address of my array? M percent PTR, I don't have PTR here. <coughs> the ampersand, the first value. Yep, and the first value will go to? Data. 
data, right? The first value is data, right? So I keep my elements in my data. Okay, look at the way the bracket works. The bracket is just using data as an array, and I use the square bracket. This is just like an ordinary array indexing, right? Okay, so data is my data. So then begin has to return data. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, how about end? What end should return? Return? Data plus. Because I need to return the address beyond the last element, right? Yeah, data plus the size. Nope. It's a private. My instance variables are the size, the capacity. So just look at those three data items. I have an array. I know the capacity. How many? How many space? How many? How many bytes allocated to that space? How many elements? Okay. <coughs> but my array may, may not be full. Maybe half full. Okay. So the size. Most of the time, the size is smaller than the capacity. Right. Okay. Question. Yes. Ryan. The Z star data, is that like the star pointer? The Z is the template, the but template I mean, like type. The star can be uh, pointer. behind the name or in front of the variable? Uh, either way, you can write it like that or same okay. the same thing. Okay. Yeah, you can also write it like that. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes people to, like to do that. But sometimes you see that too. It doesn't matter. Okay. So now, what would be the return type of begin? Z pointer, right? I need to return. What if I return must match whatever I return here? So I know data is a pointer to Z. I mean, yeah, pointer to Z. So begin has to return pointer to Z. Any question? The, I have a question about the data plus the size. Yep. Yep. Should it be the size plus one? The size plus one? OK, let me draw a picture. So data is the array. So we have 10. 10 elements, okay? But let's say only the first four has number. The capacity is 10, and this is my data array, okay? Now, when I call begin on my vector, I want to get the address of that item, right? So that's why when, when I call begin, I just need to return the address of the first element, which is what do you see inside data? Okay. But when I say n, n is not here, but n is here. Why? Because my array can currently has only four elements. So then n must return the address beyond the last element. So I need to return the address of the data plus the size, because the size is four. Right? That's why I need to do data plus the size. Question? And the type, the return type is also Z plus, right? Question? Okay. But because my function is cons, I want, uh, as I said before, I want to use a cons iterator. So I want to return a read only iterator. I'm not going to allow my program to update by using begin and end here. So that's why I have to. <coughs> Use the cons Z star. Question. Does it make sense? So now if I compile, yep, it works. Okay? So that's the simplest case how to design an iterator for an array. So basically, begin end is just 
a wrapper to your pointer manipulation. Okay? Now, how do you do plus plus? Here, fortunately for an array, because what we return begin, we'll, we're, gonna, we're gonna return an address, a pointer. So then the plus plus here will be just a simple C, C plus plus or C pointer arithmetic. Okay, in that case, we don't have to overload the plus plus operator on our iterator. Does it make sense? Okay, because again, what I return, what I return here is just a simple pointer to a float or simple pointer to an integer or to whatever. So this is just a C pointer, okay? So the plus plus that we do here is just a regular pointer arithmetic. So that's how we do begin and end, okay? So let me see if you understand. If, how about if I want to return, how about if I want to implement our begin? What do I return now? Return data plus, yeah, yep, minus one, okay? How about our end, cons, not cost? Type, thank you. Pointer, our end, const, return, what? Good. Question? Yes? With this own implementation of R begin, R end, we would have to use uh, minus minus pointer though if we had a for loop, right? Yep. Uh, no, no, plus plus. We still use plus plus. Yeah. Uh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're exactly right. Okay. Yeah. With this implementation of begin and end, when you use uh, begin and end uh, with R begin and R end, then you have to use minus minus. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, yes. Is that always true with R begin and R end? That you use minus minus? Or just if you're writing? Okay. In order to be able to mimic the behavior of the a standard vector, I do have to overload plus plus on my iterator. Okay. If you want to mimic the behavior of uh, because my this is GPSU vector, right? This is not STD vector. The way it works for STD vector, if you use R begin and R end in order to move backward, you say plus plus. Okay. okay. Now. Uh, I don't have time to talk about how to overload. I'm going to continue next week.